Ooh. Hello everybody, this is Bryant from SFFT Source, your premier unofficial guide to Six Flags Fiesta Texas. I thought that would be funny. Really, it just ended up being really hot. Oh. All right, welcome to another info vlog. This info vlog is going to cover Fright Fest at Six Flags Fiesta Texas 2017. I'm gonna pop up a map that we created on our main website real quick. Check that out. These are all of your live shows, haunted houses, scare zones, anything you can think of that's happening at the park, it's on this map. If you wanna look at this map a little bit more, it is on our main website. Just go to sfftsource.com and go to the Fright Fest guide page and it's gonna be right there. So I'm going to elaborate and talk about all of the things that you can do at Fright Fest this year. So I think we'll start in Crack Axle Canyon, we'll wind our way around through the park, end up in Spassburg, and we'll go from there. If you go through Crack Axle Canyon, the first thing you're gonna come up on is Slaughterhouse Six. Slaughterhouse Six is a returning haunted house, and basically it's slaughterhouse themed. It's a pretty decent haunted house. I recommend you check it out. Now, I will say this, um, the haunted houses are gonna be free again this year. Just keep in mind that typically makes the waits for the haunted houses a lot longer. So we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a little while. Now, as you go through uh, Crack Axle Canyon, you're gonna end up at Sundance Theater, and that is where Rock Apocalypse is happening. Rock Apocalypse is returning again this season. It's a great rock and roll show. They do a lot of classic rock. It has a live band, singers, and that's in Sundance Theater. So if you head down the pathway a little ways into Crack Axle Canyon, you end up at the Buried Alive Haunted House. The Buried Alive Haunted House is one of the better haunted attractions at the park. Now, they did have an outside company come in and actually design and build this haunted house. So I would put it a little bit above the rest in terms of just quality and excitement. And that's one you definitely want to check out. Now we're going to keep going. You'll end up at Whistle Stop, which is the one of the train stations at the park. This is the Crack Axle Canyon train station. Keep in mind for Fright Fest, they turn this into something completely different. This is where the arrival takes place. The arrival takes place one time a day. And that is basically where all of your scare zone monsters come in on the train. They exit out through Whistle Stop and basically terrorize guests. You'll get terrorized in Crack Axle Canyon. Then all of these scare actors are going to run to their areas, their respective uh, scare zones, and they're going to have at it. So that usually happens at about 7 p.m. each evening. So keep in mind when you're walking through Crack Axle Canyon, it does get a little crazy over there right at about that time. Now as we keep going, we're gonna come up on one of the brand new haunted attractions for 2017, and that is Blood Bayou. From what I can tell, Blood Bayou is a brand new outdoor haunted house that is actually taking place in the queue area of Gully Washer. So this is gonna be very interesting. This is a brand new haunt. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I've heard that some there are some things being built specifically for this haunted attraction that are gonna make it really awesome. As we walk past Blood Bayou, we are going to, on your left-hand side in Crack Axle Canyon, see Lone Star Lil's Amphitheater. Amphitheater, yes. Amphitheater, not Amphitheater. Who made me say that? Anyways, this is where Monster Mash Bash takes place each night, and Monster Mash Bash is the premier show at Fright Fest at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. You cannot miss that show. And I am told that even though they've had this running storyline the past two years, this year they are actually going back to a more traditional, old school Monster Mash Bash storyline. I don't think Mayor Slayer is coming back, but I do think we're going back to our more traditional feel. A little less of a storyline probably, but still a lot of great music, live band, pyrotechnics, dancing, singing, you name it, it happens. Right outside of the amphitheater, is the Aftermath Scare Zone. This Scare Zone is basically at the threshold where Spassburg meets Crack Axle Canyon, and this is a returning Scare Zone. 
I think it's a very cool scare zone. They do a really cool laser effect that shoots over the open air onto the wall and then they shoot fog up. So all of this, it just looks crazy. You know, it's a post-apocalyptic world, maybe like some radiation or something. And here, here and here and there, you'll see some fire shooting out from random places. And of course you'll have monsters to deal with. Now that little shaded area by Skyscreamer that you can walk through the shaded pathway, that gets turned into part of the scare zone too. And it's crazy in there. It's very dark, very foggy and you never know what's gonna pop out and scare you. So we're gonna make our way into Spassburg, and this is all theoretical if you haven't noticed. We'll make our way into Spassburg, and if you go to Bugs Whitewater Rapids, you'll notice that Bugs Whitewater Rapids is actually gone. Um, for Fright Fest, it closes. They take the queue line of this ride and turn it into Torture Chamber. Torture Chamber is another one of the park's haunted houses and it was new last year and I actually didn't do it. So I'm gonna have to do it this year. If you guys know anything about Torture Chamber, let me know in the comments below. I think it's probably a pretty cool haunted house just because it's inside of a castle. So that's another one of your haunted attractions and we're gonna keep going through Spassburg. And as you walk up the outside edge of Spassburg by Superman Krypton Coaster, you come to the entrance of the Rockville area. Now Rockville is home to two haunted attractions and they kind of play off of each other a little bit so once you enter Rockville you come in on zombie apocalypse that is the zombie infested scare zone that takes the streets of Rockville one thing that's really cool about it is they put out old cars they do a lot of cool theming and they also have people dressed as Rockville citizens but they're just zombies this time so really cool that they play off of the theming in the park for this scare zone. Now as you walk through Rockville, if you can get through Zombie Apocalypse, you end up at Rock Kill High School. That's right, Rock Kill, not Rockville, Rock Kill. And this is another one of the park's haunted houses and it is actually themed around Rockville High School. So I did this a couple of years back. You have a library, you have a playground, you have I believe we went through some locker rooms at one point in time, so they really take that Rockville High School theming and throw it in your face, and even more zombies. Who doesn't like zombies? You know, Rockville loves zombies, so we're gonna go with it. Now, as we go into the Fiesta Bay Boardwalk area from Rockville, I am told that these two haunted attractions are actually revamped for 2017. So you have Carnival 3D, which is going to be the haunted house, if you go as you are walking to Pandemonium, the building that used to be the Q House, they've actually turned into a haunted house, and this is a 3D clown infested haunted house. So if you're afraid of clowns, you might want to stay away. And before you actually get to Carnival 3D is Circus Berserkus, which is another scare zone, and yeah, I, the, as the name tells you, more clowns. If you don't like clowns, I wouldn't go back there. There's tons of clowns and they will come get you. So you gotta be careful. We are going to wind our way back out of Fiesta Bay Boardwalk through a little bit of Rockville, back into Spassburg over by Sangerfest Hall. And that is where the Wicked Hollow Scare Zone is. So this is kind of a European witch themed scare zone. They have witches, they have gargoyles, they have crow looking people, they had a stilt walker. They also had, last year, a dragon on top of Sangerfest Hall shooting fire. So hopefully the dragon comes back. That was a really cool touch. I hope maybe this scare zone expands a little bit. It was new last year and it was kind of small. So we'll have to see if it expands. I think it could easily be one of the better scare zones if they add more and more to it. So we are going to come through Spassburg back into Los Festivales, which is where we probably should have started on this tour because it's at the front of the park. But here we are in Los Festivales and you have your final scare zone, which is Chupacabras from Hill. Now these are mutated Chupacabra looking human sized crazy things. And what's interesting about this scare zone is there's theming. And there's also hidden speakers that just have random loud noises. And I think that might be scarier than the actual mutated Chupacabra things running around. I don't know, that's just my take on it. And as we come through Los Festivales, you come to Teatro Fiesta, which is one of the park's outdoor theaters. And there is a brand new show this season called Monster Boogie. 
So, don't know much about the show. I think it's probably gonna be some kind of musical review. Either way, the shows are always very solid. So, I'm hoping that this new show just brings a little, little new uh, mix to the game for Fright Fest. And as we walk more towards the entrance of the park, you come up on Zaragoza Theater. And at Zaragoza Theater, they are bringing back Dead Man's Party. That was new for last year. I don't expect it to be different this year. Still a great show. And it's got a little bit of comedy mixed in, but it's mostly a musical review. So make sure you check that out as well. That is just a quick rundown of all of the haunted attractions that are coming to Fiesta Texas this season. Now, a few tips that I have for you. If you want to get the haunted houses done and see shows, it's a little bit tricky. The way the show schedule is designed and the way the haunted houses are with them being free, it really puts you in a crunch. If you have a little extra money, I do recommend you buying one of the upgraded passes for the haunted houses. That'll make sure that you get into all of the haunted houses without waiting in a long line. And then when shows happen, you can go see the shows as well. Now, before about 7 p.m. each night, the park is family friendly. So if you do have kids, you can take them out to the park before then. But once, once the arrival happens, it's no holds barred. I mean, there's monsters everywhere, there's fog. Really not a family friendly environment. Just keep that in mind if you have kids because it sucks each year when you see kids just having a terrible time because their parents are dragging them through. Another thing that I recommend is Fright Fest is starting really early this year, September 15th through October 31st. The earlier in the Fright Fest season you can get out there, the better. It historically seems to be less crowded the earlier or the further away from, from Halloween that we are. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you can go on a day that is not Saturday or Sunday, you typically have a better shot at having a more enjoyable, less crowded time. As I said before, you guys have got to check out the shows, especially Monster Mash Bash. However, I would recommend seeing all the shows, but Monster Mash Bash is going to be your must-see show each season at Fright Fest. We do have show times on our website. Just go to sfftsource.com, follow the links to the live shows page. All of the show times for Fright Fest are already up. So go check those out on our website. And another thing about our website is we have a full Fright Fest guide that explains everything I just talked to you about. We have pictures, descriptions, locations, everything. And there's also a remodel of the website coming very, very soon. If it hasn't happened by the time this video is published, you can go to the description below and you can go directly to our Fright Fest guide as well as our main website. That's going to do it for this info vlog. If you have any questions about Fright Fest, I know I went through this stuff very quickly. Please go to the comments below. Feel free to ask. You can also contact us on social media, contact us on our main website. I would love to answer any questions, concerns, anything you may have. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find the answer for you. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you guys stay tuned. There will be a guide for Six Flags Over Texas coming soon that we actually did at the park to show you Fright Fest, Fright Fest progress. Say that three times fast. And that video is going to be coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. And make sure to stick around. We will have Fright Fest videos about mid-October for Six Flags Fiesta Texas.